What's up guys, Rui here and welcome back to the channel. Now I've not been this excited for a recent pickup video since the Acronym P30AE. Therefore I'm super hyped to be making today's video because I finally am able to make a video and talk about Georgia, a brand or rather the designer that I have been a huge fan of for a while now. Recently they had a huge archive sale and managed to pick up some very interesting pieces that I have been eyeing on. Therefore, for today's video, we will be checking out what the brand is all about, as well as taking a look at all the pieces that I picked up. But before we continue further into today's video, it would be very, very much appreciated if you could go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below if you are new to the channel or just haven't been subscribed yet, as it really does help the channel out a long way. Also, if you guys are feeling generous and want to help support the channel in a much bigger way, I do have a Patreon page whereby at its lowest tier, it is only a dollar a month. And all of it will go into helping me to pick up new filming equipment so that I can continue to improve the qualities of the videos for you all, as well as helping to keep the lights on this channel. Small disclaimer, I have to put out everything that I will be discussing and talking about the brand are all of my thoughts and personal interpretation. So do take everything that I say here with a grain of salt. A quick search on Google or YouTube, you may not find too much information regarding the brand. So hopefully this video is able to fill in some of those information gaps and be somewhat of a good place to start learning more about it. If you guys are interested to know more in depth about the brand, I highly recommend you guys to check out a podcast called From The Threads that features Georgia himself taking us along through the journey of the entire brand from how it all started to where they are right now. Having graduated from Raffles College, which is one of the very few colleges in Malaysia that offers fashion school, the brand Georgia was first established in 2012 by Georgia himself alongside his partner and wife Melissa Deng. Along those years, the brand has gone to hold multiple fashion shows across the globe such as Milan, Shanghai, Vietnam, and the latest one being their twin collection, or as the brand calls it as chapters, will be held in Paris. I would argue and say this may very well be the most established and successful fashion brand to have come up from Malaysia in recent times, with close to 50 stockists globally that carries pieces from their brand. They also had various collabs under its sleeve and just to name a few, you have the All Black Reebok Fury Palm, a Borough Spring collab with FDMTL, a collab with Uniqlo under the UT line and with the latest one being a collaboration between Mastermind Japan, which was in fact released only a couple of days ago. And to me, the collection showcases one of the many strengths of the brand that does a phenomenal job in embracing traditional Malaysian cultural arts with a modern outlook. To describe what sort of genre the brand falls into, I will put it into the category of elevated basic cut and sew wear. As there is this very strong emphasis of minimalist design that utilizes fairly muted and darker colors, while at the same time not being afraid in experimenting with more interesting cuts, shapes, and silhouettes. For those of you who have a keen eye, you will probably see a fair amount of design similarities taken from designers like Yoji Yamamoto, Rei Kawakubo, or Jun Takahashi, and that is in fact quite true, as these were the first few designers that inspired Joja to get into fashion. That is why you do see some DNA resemblance from those designers being embedded into his design language. This brings me to the next portion of the video. Despite having a strong influence from these designers, the brand is able to still craft its own brand identity, and I think a lot of it comes down to how Georgia has this eye for incorporating local militia essence into its design language, and I think it is done and executed so incredibly well here. If we were to check out their brand statement, it's mentioned that the label has a distinctive discernment of thought-provoking silhouettes, with nuance of natural and functional essence being woven through, whilst maintaining a strong tie to tradition and urban origins. Now you are not going to see this in every single piece, but I would say the brand is not shy in referencing a lot of local wear and traditional art. For example, on some pieces like the latest Mastermind collab or from their previous chapters, you can find the utilization of batik, which is a form of traditional fabric art technique, which is a very popular art form across Malaysia and Indonesia. Therefore, it's really cool to see such a fabric art being utilized into a more modern piece like a work jacket or even a bomber jacket. There is also a piece which is constructed using a very classic piece of fabric among Malaysians called sarong, which still today have many forms applications such as using it as a garment piece, 
blankets to even baby cradles. It's a very beautiful fabric and super comfortable, which is perfect for the hot climate. While there are many other cultures and races out there who do have their own version or interpretation of a sarong, this is very much a piece of fabric that many Malaysians can relate to growing up. Now these are just some of the pieces that you can see how the localized elements is being implemented and I will talk more about it as we dive into a piece that I picked up later down the video. I understand and respect the importance of preserving cultural arts and some might even say we should preserve it in its original form. However, I'm someone who do believe that there needs to be some sort of evolution on top of it that brings this traditional art form into a more modern landscape that is more relatable in today's time. And I think it's only through these matters that kind of the younger generation will start to grow appreciation and liking towards these traditional art forms. I think a lot of this design language is contributed to its life experiences. And to me, this is a classic story of Don't Judge a Book by its cover. Being born and raised in Kelantan, which is one of the more northern states of Malaysia, it's still considered somewhat of the countryside. And till today, there is a very strong presence of traditional arts and architecture that are still being preserved and displayed. Therefore, there is a very high chance that avant-garde fashion would probably not make the list of things that one might think of regarding that part of the country. However, to me, this is where the beauty of the story lies because there is this extra layer of depth that Jojo is able to draw from because of his upbringings, which gives him a very unique perspective compared to someone who grew up in a big city when it comes to designing. Now that we've gone through an overview and hopefully a better understanding about the brand, let's check out the pieces that I picked up. Now, during the entire sales period, there were so many amazing pieces as it kind of encompasses all the pieces from seasons back as well. But I decided to pick these pieces up because I felt that they are the ones that will fit very well within my wardrobe. The first piece is from the Chapter 18 Fall Winter 2021 collection and it's the Shield Pocket Sweater. I actually had eyes on this piece for a while now and to me this is an instant cop when I saw it on sale. From a design standpoint, it is a very minimal piece but I absolutely love the subtle details that they added. It's constructed with terry cotton, hence you get this soft towel-like material that feels really comfortable and cozy to wear. Compared to the champion sweater that you always see me wear a lot in my videos, I can definitely feel the step up in quality and construction. The main highlight of the sweater is the side pockets that are located on each side of the sleeves. It does give the piece a more utilitarian look that fits great within the whole functional aesthetic, but when it comes to actual functionality, it's not the best as it's not a very sturdy pocket to begin with and it also doesn't have any locking mechanism. It's great for storing wireless earbuds or some receipts, but try not to put anything more than that. However, there is an upside in a sense if you do want to wear it on its own, the pocket details does help to give the piece more visual element. But if you do intend to use it as a layering base, the sleeve pockets are thin enough to flush nicely underneath your outerwear so you don't have any weird bulge sticking out. Moving down to the sleeves, there are thumb holes that allows you to switch up the styling of the sweater and I actually find myself liking this subtle feature a lot more than I expected. It does give this stealthy urban ninja vibe but it also is a great addition because it allows the cuff of the sweater to stick out of the outerwear giving a little bit more detail to your outfit. Overall, this is a super versatile and simple piece that will fit in probably any wardrobe with ease, especially if you have the whole functional wear aesthetic in mind. This next piece that I picked up is a silhouette that I have been really taking a liking towards, which is a more skirt-like bottom wear. And this wraparound pants from the spring summer 2020 really nails everything that I was looking for. First things first, let's talk about the best part, which is the silhouette. It is incredibly white and with the added pleated design, it gives out almost a skirt-like look while still being a pair of pants. This silhouette did grow on me in recent times as I've been seeing quite a number of people styling it and I think it actually pairs so incredibly well with the whole tech wear aesthetic. In fact, a lot of my inspiration actually came from Jennifer Bin. I think the way she incorporates functional wear with a much wider silhouette like a skirt just looks so amazing. Just like the sweatshirt, it is also constructed with cotton but much more dense and heavy. 
Paired this up with the thick elastic waistband, it does feel quite heavy overall, but it helps to maintain the overall shape and structure of the pants really well. When it comes to design details, just as the name suggests, there is this wraparound mechanism that you can use to tighten the pants through the drawstrings and this serve as the belt system. However, you are technically losing access to one of the pockets because of how the extra fabric covers the pocket opening. Alternatively, you can actually also tie the access fabric behind, giving you access to both pockets just that the diagonal slit will be behind instead. While some might refer to this piece as a reference to a Hakama pants, I instead feel like the overall design does remind me of some resemblance to the traditional way of wearing a sarong for men. One detail that stood out to me the most is the diagonal slit running across the pants as you tie the access fabric up. It does give this illusion as if you are wrapping a piece of cloth around your body. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is what I meant by infusing and capturing the local essence of Malaysia and interpreting it into a more modern and sleeker silhouette. Ask me a couple of years ago, I probably would have never imagined to see such local references being implemented into a more avant-garde silhouette. I honestly had so much fun coming up with different outfits and styles using this piece, which is why I'm so grateful to be able to pick it up. If you do want to try to spice up your wardrobe a little bit or just try something different, I would highly recommend giving this silhouette a shot. It's really much easier to style than it looks while drastically changing the look of an outfit and I think after this I do have much more confidence in trying out an actual skirt. If you have watched all the way to the end, thank you so incredibly much for taking your time to do so. I do hope I managed to do this brand justice by properly representing it to you all out there. And if you like what you see here, go ahead and follow them over on Instagram to keep up with the latest updates. Give this video a thumbs up if you have found it useful and once again if you guys are new to the channel or just haven't been subscribed yet, please do me a favor and just hit the subscribe button down below. It's because of these little things that really does help to push the channel out to more people. Please do stay safe out there and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.